What's up guys? This is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and let's quickly go over what we did in the previous tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we made our connection from our project to our JDBC driver and we defined it as a MySQL JDBC driver. Perfect. And we know it works perfectly because no exception was thrown. So, the next step of what we want to do is we want to make that connection from the driver to the database. Now, you need to understand the difference between a database and tables. There's a reason why I wrote tables as plural here. That's because within your application for your website, you're going to have one central database which would have many tables. So every time you query something in your project, you're going to be actually asking for these table names which has the actual information, but the connection that we're going to be making is going to be to the database. So the driver is going to connect to the database, and then when it connects to the database, it will be able to see all of those individual tables. So I hope that makes sense now. So now we're going to make our connection from our driver to our database, and that would allow us to access all of our different tables. Now the only problem is, within our server, we haven't created our database yet. We might have to do that. So I just started up my MAMP server, and now I'm going to come to my start page, I'll refresh this. Oh man, that's still there from the previous tutorial. So now I'm going to come into PHP my admin, and we're at um, port number 3306. You should see 3306 here. If you don't, go back to my previous tutorial or go to Google and see how you change your port number. Let's go to PHP my admin. And let's go to SQL. And what we need to do is we need to create a database. Sorry, I have a bad word here. I created a database before that just had stupid information. And for some reason, it will never go away. So sorry about that. But in order to create a database that we can make that connection from this guy to this guy, you need to write an SQL query. And all you need to do, very simple, in all caps, just type create database and let's just call it YouTube or anything that you want to call it. You can call it the name of your site, whatever. I'm not going to tell you, no, you need to create it this way, but just create that database and click go. And now in here you will see YouTube. So now we have a new database and this database, no tables are found in this database now, but then we will start populating this database later. So now that we have created this database, we can actually make the connection from the driver to the database. So let's start doing that here in the implementation class. So let's double click this so that all we see is this and we still need this try catch block for this, um, for this connection to the uh, JDBC driver, but let's take out these print statements because now we know that it works so we don't need to keep printing that out. So now when we run it, it should show nothing. We run it, and it shows nothing. That's good. It would be bad if it showed the error message. So I hope you're following along with me. So now let's make that connection from the driver to the actual database that we just set up. So follow along with me, and I will explain this in a second. So in your imports, type import and let's go to java.sql.connection and then type import java.sql.statement and then lastly let's type import java.sql.driver.manager okay now that we've written these three import statements, I'm going to explain to you what we want to do with these import statements, and then we're actually going to do it. So, the import java.sql.connection, what this will do, if you can't guess, was we will use this import to help us establish that connection with our database. So this will be used to help us establish the connection with the database. Statement is an SQL class or interface that will let us um, statement will allow us to actually write the statement the SQL statement of what we want to do after we make that connection so the connection interface will allow us to create that connection with the database and the statement interface will allow us to do some kind of SQL query once we get into the database 
And the driver manager is just one more step that will help us go from the driver to the database. So it also helps us make that connection. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is come to this try and give me two enters and come up and type connection. Connection is assigned null. Then type statement. Statement is assigned null. And let's type in driver manager, driver manager. Actually, we don't have to. I'm sorry, we don't have to uh, do that one. All right, so all you should have is connection. Connection is assigned null, and statement, statement is assigned null. I kind of got in a rhythm there, and I started typing, and I realized that doesn't really make much sense. So uh, remember, connection helps us make the connection. Driver manager also makes us helps us make that connection and statement is what we will use when we actually want to do our SQL queries. So the first thing about what we want to do is let's just try and make that connection. So let's not get to the SQL queries yet. Let's just try and make that connection. So in order to do that, let's type in a new print statement that will say system.out.println connecting to database. All right, so this will be the first thing that we write. Then we are going to talk to our driver, and then after this, type in, and I'll explain this in a second, connection is assigned driver manager dot get connection. Type in string braces, string braces, string braces and give me a semicolon. Now, the reason we're getting an error here is because they're saying, hey, if you're gonna make a connection to a database, you need to have some kind of catch block that will catch just in case there's an SQL exception that is thrown. So this is saying, hey, you have a connection to a database, and what happens if it doesn't work? Then I'm gonna throw an SQL exception, so you should catch it. So we need to add up here, import java.sql.sql exception and then down here let's catch that exception we can't just put in another catch here because java doesn't work like that each catch that you do it has to be in a new catch block so type in catch sql exception error and we'll do the same thing we did with the other one system.out.println error and let's type plus error dot get message and that should go away and it does so now let's fill in the information for what we will have for each one of these blocks the first block is going to be the actual um, URL for our um, database um, the database that we created so the database that we created um, here actually has a URL that JDBC is going to want to connect to. And then the next parameter here is going to be the username of, of that database. And the next parameter is going to be the password of that database. Where do you know the, UR, the username and the password? If you go to start, you can see the username and the password. They're both root. So let's do the first two that are easy. We know the username is root, and we know the password is root. So in here, we want to type the URL for that individual database so that the driver manager, see this driver, he can take us from here to here. So in order to take us from here to here, he needs the URL, he needs the username, and he needs the password. So let's give him that URL. So type in JDBC colon my SQL colon front slash front slash type in local host colon and then give me two underscores and then do me a front slash and give me two underscores now these underscores are wrong but I just want to explain what's going to go into each underscore in the first underscore you're going to put that port number so you are going to put this number so take those underscores out and type in 3306. 
And then in the next underscore, you are going to put the name of the database you want to connect to. So if we go to phpMyAdmin, the name of the database we want to connect to is YouTube. So all you do is in here you type in Y-O-U-T-U-B-E. -E. So that's how you make your connection. So connection is assigned and then this whole connection is assigned to this guy. All right. And we use the driver manager from up here to help us use that connection. So anytime we want to refer to that connection, we use this variable name. Pretty cool, huh? So now let's do a system.out.println and let's type in connection successful. All right, so the first step was connecting to the database then we made the connection here and then we typed in connection successful so if there's a problem it will catch the error in here and print it out and if it does it successfully which we hope it does then it will just say connection successful now I want you to add after your catch block give me an enter and type in finally and what finally does in the try catch block is this is a these you can put statements here that will be executed no matter what happens in the try block and no matter what happens in the catch block. What would we want to do no matter what happens up here? We want to close the connection and we want to close statement. Even though we're not using statement yet, but I just wanted to introduce it to you so that you'll know what it means later. And remember, statement is what we use to do our SQL queries. But we're not doing any queries yet, we're just connecting. But, so what we want to do in the finally block is we want to close the connection and close the statement. So all you type is you just say, if connection does not equal null connection dot close and close that connection now you're going to have an error because this is going to say hey if you want to do anything that has to do with connecting to the database you need to expect an SQL exception makes sense if you're doing something with the SQL database you need to expect an SQL exception so all you need to do is put this in a try catch block so type in try put braces around it type in catch type SQL exception ignore and we're just gonna ignore it so we're not gonna do anything in the catch we're just gonna catch it and we're not gonna do anything so what this will do is if this connection worked out it's no longer null so we assign something to the connection if something happened here what we want to do is we want to close that connection so what if we wanted to close the statement which actually is null we would type the exact same thing and just change it with statement. Statement, statement. So in the next tutorial, we will be using that statement more, but I just wanted to write it in here. And again, connection helps us connect to the database. Statement helps us write those SQL queries. So let's run this and we hope that it works. So when we run it, connecting the database, connection successful. Bam, it works. What does it do? It said, connecting the database, then it made our connection to the driver, and it's a MySQL driver, then we made that connection using driver manager, uh, and we put the um, username, I mean we put the URL to the database, we put the username, and we put the password. So we got all the credentials to that individual database, and we sent it to the connection. And then we just printed out system.out.println connection successful, because that means we made the connection. And then in the finally block, we close the connection and we close the statement. Okay? So what I would suggest doing is writing this a couple times and making sure you got it down pat so that you know, all right, I got to make my connection, I got to make my statement, I got to know what I got to import so that you can write this like the back of your hand. You know, you know you got to make your driver. If you understand the flow of what's going on here, writing this won't be all that difficult. So in the next tutorial, we're going to write our first SQL statement. So stay tuned. It's going to get more and more interesting, I promise you. So right now, we made that connection to the database. So now we have that full flow here. And now we want to actually do something to one of the tables in our database, which would involve an SQL query. 
All right, so stay tuned for the next tutorial. I hope this tutorial was useful and that I explained everything that you were looking for, and thank you for watching.